Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before. I'm here with McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, Batman and Robin. We got the whole wave here. Strap in, it's gonna be a doozy. So I think Todd saw that the whole Dark Knight trilogy wave went over so well, much beloved Christopher Nolan films, and he said, hey, you know what? Let me follow that up with everyone's second favorite Batman movie, Batman and Robin. No, definitely not. Definitely not that. Batman and Robin is objectively a uh, terrible, terrible movie, but I kind of think it's due for a bit of a cultural reevaluation. It is a terrible movie, yes, but it is an extremely watchable movie. In the same way that I think The Phantom Menace is the most watchable of the prequels. It's it's bad in a way that's endearing, while, you know, the rest of episode two and three, those are just unwatchable. And as bad as Batman and Robin is, it's not bad enough to throw out the entire Schumacher verse. There's a lot to like there. I really think Honestly, Batman Forever is actually in my top three uh, bat favorite Batman movies. So I think it's a good time to kind of walk back the hate a little bit. And we can start by admiring this really excellent looking group of figures here. I pre-ordered these from McFarlane Toys online store. I plopped down my Bat credit card and said, Todd, you, you know what to do. And now here we are. Like I said, probably not everyone's first choice when it comes to, uh, you know, getting figures from the older Batman movies, but these look pretty amazing. I can't deny it. And as is the case many times with McFarlane, the longer you wait for a character, uh, the better the figure turns out. You know, we're here at the tail end of, what, year four, I think, of the DC Multiverse line. McFarlane really has been improving as they've gone along. Generally, the longer you hold out for a character, the happier you are by the time you get it. So we got the whole group here. Batman, Robin, Batgirl, Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze. Our heroes are wearing their first costumes from the movie. They had uh, they had some different bat suits at the end of the movie, but you know that's just uh, but that leaves us room for another potential wave down the road, maybe where we get a Bill De Bane. It is nice to see that we're getting two female characters in this wave. People that have got these figures before I have, they're gushing about them already. Uh, I think these are going to be well liked. I think people are, are going to be picking them up. So that's going to be nice to be sending a message that we are definitely down for the female characters. When they're done right, these look like they're really done right. Overall, I think the art style here is exactly what it should be. They are a little bit stylized. Not totally, not 100% naturalistic. Maybe Arnold is, is maybe the most accurate sculpt. But, but generally what it comes down to for me, I don't think McFarlane gives these figures enough paint passes to sell a completely photorealistic, naturalistic portrait. So they're a little more stylized, and now they're gonna span the gap between movie and comic characters I can mix and match. I could put this Robin with a comic style Batman, and I think it'll, it'll still play. The portraits, especially on Robin and Batgirl, they remind me a lot of a custom figure sculptor I've seen on Instagram. Zilu does a lot of Batman animated characters. He's gone on to now, I think, he's sculpting gargoyles for, for NECA. Kind of feels like they've taken a cue from him as far as how they've approached the art style, especially on the portraits. Now let's dive into these figures here. We'll start with the Clune Meister. We've already gotten to see this figure with the uh, Batman movie six pack. Of course, now we're getting him here with the fully sculpted plastic cape. If you guys know me, you know I'm here for the sculpted capes. They're just going to be a better match for the art style of the figure every time. This might be the softest, thinnest cape they've done, sculpted cape that they have done yet. Very thin, very soft and rubbery. Really nice looking. It, it looks like it's thick and heavy in that Burton Schumacher sort of way. Of course, check out the Batman movie six pack review if you want to Closer look at this guy. Now let's move over to the Boy Wonder. Chris O'Donnell here. I don't think he's got an earring, but it really does look like him. Despite, like I said before, having a slightly stylized, slightly, it's a, there's a slight caricature about it. And I think I think it pays off. I think overall it works really well for the, for the figure. You know, I'd have to look at the actual movie to, to figure out if this is supposed to just abruptly end here, this red stripe. I'm not certain. Personally, I prefer the Robin suit from Batman Forever, it's got the more traditional red and green colors, but I can't deny it, this looks really, really fantastic. Notice how the forearms almost have this kind of sheath 
over them, which serves to cover the lower pins, which is nice. His cape shorter than Batman's with sli and slightly windswept here. Really beautiful folds and wrinkles in that, in that sculpt there. Nice free and easy movement in the torso. Got a little bit of forward movement there. The hips, I thought for a second they were gonna, or that the cut was gonna impair the leg movement, but it's, it's, it's not. It's, it's got the give and it, I feel like I'm gonna get, be able to get some pretty cool poses with this. We'll see. I, if you don't know, I, I, I record all the poses at the end. So if you're watching this and I have a bunch of cool Robin poses, then you'll know, you know, that's how you know. The, the poses kind of speak volumes. Great movement at the anks. Yeah, I mean, like the Batman figure, uh, it's pretty much what you expect from McFarlane, but executed just about as well as anything they've ever done. I, I, I do wish these um, butterfly pieces here had uh, went from black to red. That's kind of awkward the way that they, you gotta situate them just right to kind of make that look, you know, not have that big weird red break in the whole line there. You know what I'm saying. Now let's get over to Alicia. Alicia Silverstone has a, actually a very difficult likeness to capture. They've done pretty well here, although I'd say the most kind of defining feature of her face is her mouth, the way she holds her mouth. And, the, you know, I haven't quite captured this, but I like the way it looks. I really like the hair. The hair's got a really, like, fun depth about it. It's probably the weakest likeness of the group, but like I said, I think she's got a hard... Uh, sort of portrait to nail. Of course, articulation totally on point. The hair is going to, you know, affect the movement of the head a little bit there, but great movement at the torso. The uh, the cut here is a little awkward, but you know, the lower you go here, the bigger gap you get at the waist. So I don't I don't know what the right answer is for that. because I don't think the quote-unquote diapers are are the problem. They usually look pretty good, and they're much better than the, uh, that sort of Hasbro style, being able to see, you know, deep into there, into those cuts. This is great. This is actually really great. This is probably just going to become my preferred back doll. Actually, ditto for the Robin. Even though these are extremely specific sort of looks, I think these are just the most fun figures. Her suit's got quite a bit more texture than Batman and Robin here. On the gloves, on the boots, even on the midsection here, there's slightly leathery textured areas contrasted next to smooth sections of the suit. Oh, another amazing cape, maybe the best of the three actually. Look at that. You get like these ribs that are kind of like the seams, and then on top of that, these leathery ripples that looks great. That looks really, really great. And again, like Robin, slightly windswept. And they're crushing it. Let's look at the bad guys now. Let's bring it over to Uma. You know, at first I wasn't sure about the likeness, and now I'm holding it kind of far, farther away from me. And I feel like it's really there. This is a great looking figure. Maybe, maybe the sleeper hit of this whole wave. Because like I was saying earlier, the overall art style of this wave, it, it can kind of span between live action and comic -y style, so we don't have, this is the first uh, Poison Ivy that we're getting from the DC Multiverse line, and really this would work well enough, right, right next to all the comic rogues, or I should say the mix of comic and video game and live action rogues that we've been able to assemble thus far. Overall, a, a fairly respectable amount of paint, you know, when it comes to McFarlane at least, um, but feels like it's lacking in some places like the hair I wish the hair had a little bit more depth kind of wish you know these flowery leafy details here um, were a slightly different shade than the rest of these sleeves torso looks great a really nice uh, little gradient here a little soft ramp from the light green down to darker green down to black and the black on these little on these leaves here is a nice contrast but there's some Leaves and vines kind of sculpted lower on the legs as well. I wish those were hit with this shade of green so they would contrast as well. I feel like those are kind of doable, like at home, as far as, you know, I don't I don't love to have to paint these myself, but 
myself, but I feel like that's actually within the realm of possibility. Big thick hair, but it's got a little, you know, enough give that you can turn the head. We know how all this works right now. Bicep is really well hidden by these sleeves. I love that. Double elbows, nice splicing and tooling here. It's not, doesn't feel like there's a floaty piece there in the elbow. Sculpted ball joint. Hips, all the greatest hits there. You gotta love these irregular edges here where the pelvis piece ends, where the diaphragm piece connects there. That makes a really nice transition across those cuts. Tremendous range here at the legs. That's gonna be nice. Probably put her in some sexy poses. Man, this is great. Yeah, this is really great. This will definitely be the main shelf Poison Ivy until a comic version comes around. That's what I love about the multiverse line. You get all these different source materials. Sometimes it's kind of awkward to mix and match, but you also get to kind of put together your own greatest hits versions of these teams. You get to see characters more than one time. You get to see them from different source materials. That is really one of the things I love most about the multiverse line. Although sometimes they make you wait for a character. Sometimes they make you wait for a character forever, and then all of a sudden they put out three different versions in the span of a year. That's definitely the case with Mr. Freeze here. Arnold, build a fig. This is a hefty boy. Like we saw earlier, now that likeness is just as good as it gets, man. That's a beautiful thing right there. Not just the likeness, but then the use of different materials here. You know, the clear plastic, silver paint. That is just, ah, that's just outstanding. That's got to be the best live action likeness they've done in the multiverse line to date. If not top three, at the very least, the Black Adam Rock looked, did look really good. Man, they've come such a long way since like the Suicide Squad. You'll love to see it. Now, um, the head here kind of sets a precedent, sets some expectation that the rest of the figure doesn't entirely live up to. The sculpt is great. It's just not the metallic silver. It's not chrome-like. Visually, it doesn't quite live up to the to the head there. And then these blue sections, man, I really would, oh, I wish they would have been done with this clear plastic. Oh, at least throw the clear plastic on there. That would have really stepped it up in a big way. I'm definitely gonna have to take a pass at this. And actually, our pal Toy Gains, that's a channel you, you gotta follow. You gotta subscribe to if you're not already. Great guy. I took a cue from him and started using the metallic paint pins. They're great. Like I've been trying, I've been working on this, um, well, that's a Legends, Hasbro Legends um, scooter there. But you see that silver, the chrome? That's a paint pin. So I feel like uh, this has got the potential, you know, to really come to life with with a bit of extra work, but man, that's a lot of surface area that we have to cover here to repaint it. So we put this guy together uh, and, he, and he went together perfectly. That's nice. These shoulder pads here, these are a big step up from something like um, Atrocitus, which those things, just, those shoulder pads just popped off all the time. These uh, peg in on the front and back, and then they've got a little bit of movement there so you can lift these arms up higher. Look, I love the way that the um, butterfly bushing there it's actually ribbed for our pleasure it's it's got some grooves in there that's really nice he's got single elbows no bicep cut the single elbows rotate which is nice but they don't quite get 90 degree of course he's a thick boy here wrists are a little tight but they do move move around pretty well even with this big uh, gauntlet kind of coming down it's actually got some all right movement here at the torso Big steps, we like to see that. Just a, a ton of give here in the in the in the pelvis. It's very soft. But single knees with the rotation, uh, but like the elbows, they don't quite get to 90. Angles are kind of tight, but they be moving. Not a lot here in terms of accessories, which I, for the most part I'm not really missing them, but all our heroes they only have fisted hands. Would have been nice to have some options there. Like the Batman movie six pack. It's fist only, it's just kind of limiting. We got a little um Ice blast here on the end of the freeze blaster for uh, Senor Frio here. And then we got a bunch of these clip-on ice pieces. This is really fun. I, I gotta admit. Now these pieces are really fun. They also, they took a minute to kind of figure out what the hell exactly I was supposed to do with them. Uh, but man, once you do, this is pretty hilarious. This got this big piece here. It actually is gonna go over Robin's face. Sorry, buddy. 
Um, this one clips on the arm here, and these go on top of his. That is a pretty fun transformation there. Uh, I, can, I can't deny that that's pretty hilarious, very reminiscent of the amazingly stupid scene from the movie where Robin gets frozen, the Kloonmeister's got to dunk him in hot wah-wah. It's stupid. It's a bad movie. Just don't, don't worry about it. You know, we'll have to do some playing around, see how this fits on other characters as well, and, you know, including comic characters. So maybe I can get some use out of that and not have to cover up uh, Chris's really impeccable jawline. So definitely fun, fun accessories. Although I have to wonder, like, mm, if I if I had to or if I could, would I trade these for just, you know, some nice metallic chrome, metallic silver paint on freeze? I don't know. I don't know. That's hypothetical, but I can't help but think that. So, uh, Batman and Robin Wave, this is really A+. plus. Every single one of these figures is a banger. Even Freeze, he's probably the least, my least favorite of the whole bunch. But he's a badass, still. This is really going to throw me off. I thought my I had my end of the year kind of list all squared away and ready. Um, and then this is kind of a big upset here. This is going to, this has got me questioning myself. Questioning my list, I should say. This hunky Robin's got me questioning myself with the nip. <laughs> These are great. Keep it coming. Keep the old classic movie stuff coming. Keep it coming with this art style that I think really blends really well uh, between live action and comic sources. That makes me very happy. Definitely pick these up. I mean, I don't, I don't make the rules. I don't tell you what to do with your money, but you do have to pick these up. You have to. You got to fork over hundred bucks. You get five figs. You got to do it. Sorry, guys. It's not even a good movie, but you got to get them. It's the way it is. All right. I'll catch you on the next one. And we got, like I said, end of the year stuff coming up. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Peace out.